Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of October. US reveals identity of CC1 key figure in plot to kill Khalistani terrorist Pannu. Nawaz Sharif bats for India-Pakistan ties, hails Jay Shankar visit. And Bangladesh Tribunal issues arrest warrant for Sheikh Hasina. And now for all the details. The United States has for the first time revealed the identity of CC1 a key figure in alleged plot to kill Khalistani terrorist Gurpat Pan Singh Panno. U.S. federal prosecutors have named Vikas Yadav, claiming he was an Indian government employee and have charged him with murder for hire and money laundering. The U.S. attorney's office in a statement said Yadav's alleged co-conspirator Nikhil Gupta was previously charged and extradited to the United States. Earlier, India reportedly told the U.S. that it has arrested CC1 now revealed to be Yadav. A team of officials comprising an inquiry commission also visited Washington in connection with this investigation recently. On Thursday, spokesperson of India's foreign ministry confirmed that Yadav is no longer a government official. The indictment, however, notes that Yadav is at large. Notably, it also mentions the murder of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijar in Canada, the subject of an unprecedented diplomatic row between Canada and India. Canada has alleged India's role behind the murder. Unlike the Nijar murder, India is largely seen to be cooperating with the US on the Pannu plot. India on Thursday slammed China and Pakistan after a joint statement on the sidelines of the recently held SEO summit in Islamabad made references to Kashmir. Following the meeting of Pakistan PM Shabazz Sharif and his Chinese counterpart Li Chiang, both sides issued a joint statement where they called for a resolution on the Kashmir issue under the UN Charter. Reacting to this statement, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaswal said, India's stand is known that Kashmir is ours and will continue to remain so. If someone says something, it does not change anything, Jaswal said. अवगत हैं हम लोगों ने कई दफा भी यहां से कहा है तो मैं चाहूंगा कि जो हम लोगों ने वक्तव्य इस मामले में दिया है उस पर आप नजर डालें कश्मीर हमारा है था और रहेगा प्रणय हंस रहे हैं हमारा बयान है हमारा पोजीशन है ये किसी और को कुछ कहने से हमारा पोजीशन नहीं बदल जाता है तो ये इस बात को ध्यान रखना चाहिए Meanwhile, Pakistan former Prime Minister and ruling PM LN Supremo Nawaz Sharif has called for improvement in ties between New Delhi and Islamabad as he expressed hope of bilateral meetings between both the countries. Sharif, talking to Indian journalists in Lahore, said visit of India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar to Pakistan was a positive change and it will allow breathing space to the fundamental differences between both sides. He added, things would have been much better if Prime Minister Narendra Modi had himself come to attend the SEO summit. Referring to PM Modi's surprise visit to Lahore in 2015, Sharif said threat should be picked from where it was left. He added, both countries have already lost 75 years and now they should think for the next 75 years. India and Pakistan often blame each other for their frosty relations and reiterate entrenched diplomatic positions on issues such as Kashmir and terrorism, suggesting no thaw in ties is likely anytime soon. And Pakistan has joined the ranks of almost two dozen countries that have been declared not free for doling out harsh punishments and imposing curbs on the internet. According to the report, Freedom on the Net 2024 by Washington-based Freedom House, Pakistan scores 27 out of a scale of 100 in internet freedom. The report also highlights Pakistan Army's enormous influence over government formation and policies and states that it intimidates the media and enjoys impunity. The report's 
also states that Pakistani authorities have long used the education system to portray Hindus and other non-Muslims negatively. It also notes Shiite Muslims, Christians and members of other religious minority groups can face blasphemy accusations that arise from trivial disputes and escalate into criminal prosecution and mob violence. The United Nations mission in Afghanistan called on Thursday for an investigation into reports that a large group of Afghan migrants have been shot and killed on the Afghanistan-Iran border. Afghan media outlets said more than 200 Afghan migrants who entered Iran illegally were attacked on the Iranian territory and that dozens had been killed and injured. However, Iran's ambassador to Afghanistan, Hassan Kazmi Komi, in a post on X denied the reports of deaths of dozens of illegal nationals. Afghanistan's Taliban has not confirmed the incident and said it was investigating. The United Nations did not make any reference to who might have carried out the alleged attack. Thousands of Afghans fled their country in 2021 when the Taliban seized control. Both Iran and Pakistan are home to millions of Afghan migrants, but both have clamped down hard on refugees inside their borders. Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal on Thursday issued an arrest warrant for former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, citing her alleged involvement in mass killings during violent protests that erupted earlier this year. The protests, which began as a student-led movement against public sector job quotas, escalated into some of the deadliest unrest since the country's independence in 1971, resulting in over 700 deaths and numerous injuries. The violence ultimately forced Hasina to flee to India on 5th of August and an interim government led by Nobel Peace Prize laureate Mohammad Yunus took charge. The tribunal's proceedings presided over by Justice Golam Mortoza Mojumdar saw prosecutors request arrest warrants for 50 individuals, including Hasina. To date, more than 60 complaints have been filed against Hasina and other leaders of her Awami League party, alleging enforced disappearances, murder and mass killings. Moving on, Gujarat is among the leading states in India in agricultural innovation, driving sustainable practices and empowering farmers in modern techniques. A report. Gujarat, once central to India's white revolution, is now driving a new era of sustainable agriculture through high-value crops, modern irrigation and farmer empowerment. Known as India's growth engine, its agriculture and allied sectors have grown at an impressive 9.7% annually, surpassing the national average of 5.7%. Gujarat is reaping the benefits of two decades of pro-farming policies that have transitioned the state to a diversified, market-driven agricultural economy. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel, initiatives like soil health cards and the Jyoti Gram scheme continue to promote sustainable practices and expand irrigation. As Gujarat's Chief Minister Narendra Modi launched the Krushi Mahotsav, an annual event connecting farmers with modern techniques and expert advice, boosting productivity and promoting sustainability. Since 2001, Gujarat's farmers have shifted towards horticulture, with crop area increasing by 181% and production by 326%. By 2022, the state's fruit production reached 82.91 lakh metric ton across 4.48 lakh hectares, with major crops including mango, banana, citrus, pomegranate and sapota. Gujarat is also a leading producer of spices like cumin, fennel, coriander and chili, covering 6.57 lakh hectares with an output of 12.01 lakh metric ton. It is among the first states to implement the model APMC Act, enabling farmers to sell produce outside regulated markets. The government promotes high-value crops like dates and dragon fruit, kamalam, through subsidies and market support, 
improving farmers' livelihoods and fostering sustainable, profitable agriculture. Irrigation में जो टपक प्लान है, फवारा प्लान है सरकार की ओर से जिसमें बहुत सारी 30 percent, 40 percent subsidy मिल रही है उससे किसान सब सब फायदा भी उठा रहा है इरिगेशन का पूरा का पूरा मोदी सरकार ने जो स्कीम निकाली है बहुत बढ़िया किसान के लिए है और अब साल में 6000 रुपए अकाउंट में आते हैं छोटे खेड़ू के लिए जो किस्तों में 2 2000 करके वो भी हमें मिल रहे हैं सब The Gujarat government is also encouraging farmers to adopt natural farming techniques that reduce chemical use improve soil health and boost biodiversity. It promotes traditional crops like millets, which are well suited to these methods, with the Dang district designated as a hub for natural farming. Rajya ma prakruti kheti ne prochan appani disama sarkar kati baddha chhe. Gujarat kheru to maate sari vaat e paan chhe, kya aapna maanye rajya paal si to prakruti kheti na tajag na chhe. अने राज्य ना खेडू तो उन्हें सतत मार्गदर्शन करी रहे आचे राज्य मा अठाल लाख की वधू खेडू तोए प्राकृतिक कृषि माटे नी ताली मपाई चे न त्यार सुदीन 8.5 लाख खेडू तोए गुजरात मा प्राकृतिक खेती अपना भी चे गुजरात इस डेरी पार हाउस विद ओवर 10,000 मिल्क कोऑपरेटिव्स प्रोड्यूसिंग अराउंड 150 लाख लीटर्स डेली Encouraged by the proactive approach of the government, many farmers in Gujarat have adopted modern farming techniques that combine crop cultivation and livestock raising, allowing them to diversify their income sources. Schemes like the Jyoti Gram scheme, which provides 24-hour electricity for irrigation along with drip irrigation techniques in arid regions like Kutch and Saurashtra have transformed barren land into productive fields. Where we can't think about it, there is also a lot of food in Kutch. The first portion of the Kutch is called Kharik. So, the Kharik is a lot of food in Kutch. The Kharik is a lot of food in Kutch. The Kharik is a lot of food in Kutch. The Kharik is a lot of food in Kutch. So, it has a very big change in Gujarat. Under Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel, the Gujarat government is further enhancing farmers' welfare by digitizing land records, significantly improving the ease of doing business. By championing modern techniques and empowering farmers, Gujarat sets a powerful example for the rest of India. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.